It's Thursday, it's 8 o'clock, and it's the big metal detecting radio show. Welcome to the big metal detecting podcast. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the show. It's Thursday night, as I said, and it's the big metal detected radio show. Hope you're all well this evening. Uh, I'm Dave Sadby, your host as always, and I'll take the silly mask off now because it's annoying me greatly. So here I am in reality. Tonight's head is sponsored by Rutus. There you go. Uh, straight in with the news this week. Uh, multiple um, things to go through. One uh, quite a uh, quite a quite a big um, thing uh, that I'm sure everybody will uh, agree. Uh, let me just try and bring that up for the people we're seeing, and we will have a brief look at uh, British Museum has acquired a three thousand year old Shropshire Sun pendant. Uh, the gold buller is described as one of the most important Bronze Age finds of the last century. This was discovered by a metal detector enthusiast who wishes to remain anonymous in Shropshire in 2018. And it's, uh, it's been purchased for £250,000. An absolutely gorgeous piece. Um, un- unexplainable. Uh, hopefully... If you are listening, you can go over Google uh, this Shropshire Sun pendant and you'll be able to see that. Otherwise, uh, you'll be seeing it on the screen. Uh, Next up, Ava Bray found a Bronze Age axe on Southbourne Beach. Uh, Schoolgirl used a metal detector for the first time and found a Bronze Age axe just seconds after embarking on her new oppie. In a classic example of beginner's luck, the eight-year-old had just handed the metal detector and unearthed the ancient object, and there you can see it. Uh, another beautiful... It looks like it's actually got some engraving on it uh, by the looks of it, not 100%, uh, but beautiful nonetheless. Uh, third story this week, Bronze Age artefacts have been dug up in Shropshire and have been declared treasure. An unprecedented number of Bronze Age artefacts double come in the area of Shropshire have been declared treasure. Uh, gold ring locks. And, and these gold items are actually being uh, found encased in a lead ingot. Um, obviously, well, well, how I've tried to explain it to somebody today and how, would, how I would suggest personally, uh, back in Roman times, for instance, the, the Roman people or whoever beforehand would throw things as votive offering uh, to Manera and such like. Probably got that name wrong, but you know, I'm on about. She's fro- they've thrown them for, as a votive offering, uh, and obviously things don't sink, so they've encased it in lead to protect it for the future, uh, for, sorry, for the future, for the, uh, the person that they are offering them to. So when the uh, ingot was found, it looks like it's... Uh, I'm having a rave here, my flashy lighties. Anyway, it looks like it's been found opened and obviously looks fantastic. Uh, we'll go on to that piece next. Um, a veteran found an incredibly rare Roman horse brooch in Lincolnshire. Now, this was his name's Jason Price, and uh, he was taking part in a Detecting for Veterans weekend rally when he came across the item. Uh, remarkable condition, beautiful horse uh, Roman brooch. So again, as you can see, it's uh, it, it really is stunning. So uh, have a look at that. That that I think that we put that on basically directly after the show last week. Uh, finally, in the news this week, this is an article uh, that I wrote for the Arche- Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine. In short. Uh, English Heritage and the BBC produced an article in last week talking about illegal uh, night hawking in and around English Heritage properties in the UK. We all know of the concern. Uh, We all wish that it didn't happen. A lot of people do do it. I'm going to be writing a follow-up article this weekend 
regarding some of the people who do and aren't taken into account with night hawking. Um, people who the, the news don't bring in and, and aren't monitored and aren't able to um, police in any way, shape or form that we can see. But we'll carry on that, as I say, this week. In this instance, uh, obviously, there's, there's a hell of a lot of uh, ifs, whens and why nots taking place. Uh, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes work by the National Council for Metal Detecting that I know about. They've been in, in contact with English Heritage. And hopefully um, these matters regarding this um, will be sorted sooner rather than later. As you can see, when I uh, produce the articles, I put a number of images with links to explanations and other things. Uh, mole holes, rabbit holes, badger holes, etc., etc., so uh, we're asking, is it night talking or is it hysteria? Uh, so, so that's the news this week. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I am now going to uh, introduce our guest for this evening, who's in the background, Mr. Mark Betcher. Good evening, Mark. How are you? And good evening, Karen. Uh, they are rather sexy, though, let's say. Yeah. But now, the thing is, my son's got or had a pair similar to that, and I really don't know how they're fitting on you. You must have a minute head. <laughs> Thanks, pal. <laughs> uh, they're, looking, they're looking groovy, nonetheless. I think you should actually make a trend out of this and take them into the field, maybe. Or give them away, get some more, give them away as prizes, you know. <laughs> right, uh, I'm being told, Mark, that you've got no audio on the video feed. Have you muted yourself at all? Uh, you're better on one. I was... Hopefully you're working. Uh, Luke, can you give me a message if he's working now? Ah, we'll carry on nonetheless. Hopefully it'll be all right. I've got a new green screen, which looks a little bit better and fits the wall behind me. Uh, and tonight's hat is... No, audio on video. Has he muted himself? Yes, that's good. So I presume that, yes, you're working now. Oh, I can see a little... I can actually see... You see under your picture there, Mark, it says Mark Betcher. Can you see the, uh, the the microphone? That's obviously muted. Is it? There you are. That's back. There we go. Got again. Back again. Got again. Back again. Right. Now you're all right. Now, don't keep them hands away. Karen, stop playing with things. <laughs> oh, how rude. Anyway. I hope you're well. I hope you're both well. Uh, looking forward greatly to seeing you. Do you know, this is obviously the first time that we've we've been able to speak at length, Mark, because every time that we've been in the same vicinity, you are running around like you've had lots and lots of Colombian marching powder because you've got so much to do and so many people to deal with. So it's normally, I am Mark, you're right, yeah. So it's, uh, I actually get to speak to you tonight and learn a lot more about everything and i'm sure the listeners and uh, viewers feel the same way so any questions that you do have this evening please send our way uh first up mark how long have you been involved in the subject itself uh been detecting on and off for uh, what 30 years now man and boy yeah grandparents are to blame for it really Grandparents are good you know, kids. Lost interest a little bit. Lost, lost interest a little bit in my teenage years when uh, girls, raves, and other things seemed far more appealing than wandering around a wet, muddy field as a metal detector. But I kind of got the passion back again as I approached sort of like some later, more responsible years. <laughs> the ones with Mrs. Batcher pushing you to do normal things. <laughs> be, be, normal, be normal, apparently. <laughs> 
So you've had, I take it, a multitude of different metal detectors in that time. Oh, oh God, yeah. Give, it, give us a, a few a few other range that you've had. Uh, C-Scope, XP, Mine Lab. I think I had a Viking at some point way back in the past. A Tandy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Garrett. Tandy, weren't they like a little electrical company, like smaller than Curry's but not dissimilar? Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> Still some time ago, that no doubt. But how long have Tandy been gone now? Years, I think. No, no, no. We we want to know your age. <laughs> and I take it uh, you you formed a group. Now, obviously, I don't know the history of the metal detectives. So, can you introduce the metal detectives? Long story short, used to work for the National Health Service as a health professional. Drove me bonkers because there's too many managers managing managers and nobody managing very much at all, really. So, um, Karen, God rest her, um, she is still working there uh, um, and still quite sane. Um, but basically, I had to get out of there, started the, uh, my own business, which was a metal detecting shop called Hidden History. And at the same time, we decided we were going to start doing the metal detectives. Um, uh, but obviously, everybody wants to go digging all the time. You only need to buy one metal detector most of the time. So the the, the, dig, the digs overtook the, the shop, so I left my business partner to run the shop, um, which he did for a few years before he had enough of it. Hmm. Um, and me and Karen focused on the digs. And slowly over time, I left full-time employment um, and took this up full-time. So to here we are, 11, about 10, 11 years later. Now. Is it that long? Yeah. Wow. So, Hidden Histories, uh, it, it, did it just sell uh, metal detector equipment, or so was there other things, books and that, take it, like, things like that? Yeah. And, I, and, and that was, where was that based? Oh, right. Where, where do you actually live, Mark? What area? All right. So even going to detectables, a bit of a jaunt for you. Uh, up to Oxfordshire, it's probably about an hour and 15 minutes from here. Right. And then uh, the spring one, it's about an hour down to that. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the summer one now, it's about two hours up to that. Yeah. All groovy then. So I've, I've, I've obviously other questions. Metal detectives, um, is that a group where... You have to be a member to go on digs with you, or is it just an open thing? We, we do one open dig once a month with the wonderful LP detective, um, which is obviously open to all of their members, our members, and anybody else that wishes to join us. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we do one to three digs every week, and they are pretty much just for our members. Um, we limit most of our digs, but we get some pretty nice locations. Mm -hmm. We do all right. Lucky. And, and following your Twitter feed, some of the finds that you have uh, from the members, absolutely phenomenal, some stunning things. Yeah, as I said, we're lucky. Very. Well, they're lucky. Yeah, they're lucky. They're the ones out there trying to find it. I just find the permission. Yeah. Well, you know, you're getting... They, you're getting, they, do, they do all the hard work. You're getting something right. Uh, you know, you're getting the sites, you're getting the, the, the finds on the sites. Uh, you, you can't complain. Yeah, you can't win them all all the time. No. Um, so, if I'm right in saying again, uh, the detectable, the original detectable, uh, that was a XP event originally. That's XP, XP. detectable was born out of XP um, Gold Summer Rally, basically. Um, the wonderful Gary Blackwell, um, who we're very good friends with, um, folks back in 2016 or 17, whenever it was. Um, maybe even before that, and asked if we could help put together something um, for XP Texas. Um, and, and the challenge seemed like a good one, so, so we took it up. And uh, yeah, XP Gold Summer Rally, which we thought went really, really well, um, was the thing that kind of kicked off Detectable. Um, the Detectable came, came out of that and was like a little baby, really. Do you know what I've just done? <laughs> what did you just do? 
while you were on screen on your own, Luke had you on the screen as your own as you might have seen. And I'm 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 on the screen on my own now. So while you were on the <laughs> scene, then I've had to take I've had to take a picture. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely, men. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Just just hilarity purposes. We've got a load of posters dumped for detectable and spread them all over the place. <laughs> no one will recognise you anyway. You're too fast normally. <laughs> so the XP uh, event, how did that go as your your original big... I, t- I take it was one of your biggest events that you'd organised to date. Oh, it was, it was the first big event that we did. We did, we did, we did, we did, did we uh, that and the first detective or so. Oh, I was in pieces. Absolutely in, in, in bits. The, um, I, I come from a, 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 a music industry background, so I'm quite used to organising events. And, and organising small things is, is easy. Organising a festival is like putting on a, a, a festival. It takes me back a bit. Uh, it's hard work. There's a lot that goes into it. And uh, when you first do it, you've got to make sure that everybody's doing what they say on the tin. And they're just worried that something's going to cock up mm. somewhere along the line. So you're forever on, on edge. But now we, we're really lucky. We have got a, a, a great team of people that... Um, that support us and help us and the marshals and the admin and everything, you know, they, they all do wonderful jobs and now I find it a lot easier uh, also down the line, you know, to just sit and relax a little bit and know that everything's being taken care of. But before, it was, in the beginning, it was a real well, freak out, maximum sort of like overload. So how many people are involved in the process? Let's say Detectable last year, how many people were involved in behind the scenes, marshalling, admin, etc., etc.? Really? Uh, with all the marshals, with all the marshals, uh, the admin, uh, the litter team. Uh, yeah, there is well, like there's probably coming up to a couple of hundred people. Wow, that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. but they, they, we couldn't do it without them. Yeah, it wouldn't be what it is without people like that who help us and give us time and put in the effort. Um, without without them, the technical wouldn't be what it's become. And how long does it take you to from from getting to site uh, day one till opening day of Detectable on the Friday? How long does it take to set everything up, the marquees and toilets, etc.? Uh, we normally start setting up on the Tuesday, Tuesday um, before the arrival. Before the arrival. So, so it's normally sort of like Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday night, 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 I can imagine. I mean, I, I turned up early Friday morning last year. I left very early, got there uh, early morning. And obviously the mark key was up. Uh, there was a few people pottering about. But again, for me to be able to see... Um, Everything going on at that point, it, it was quite remarkable. All the people coming and going, all the uh, the new stalls setting up, um, and and it was continuous all day long. It was quite a sight. That's why I'm normally running around like a. <laughs> <laughs> and and the event uh, is four weeks away. Spring detectable. Yes. Yeah, spring's only four weeks away now. It's like someone's put a rocket up the arse of time and uh, it's just getting closer and closer, <laughs> faster and faster. It is. It's mad. It seems like Christmas yesterday and we're like start of March now. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. I just saw Pete's comment about my face. Uh, you, should have, you should have heard what I said when that oversized fish tank arrived last year. Was the swear words involved? Oh, lots of them because nobody had told me anything about a a fish tank, <laughs> so I'm trying not to swear I'm doing a really good job. So I was like, where the, did, did this come from, and what the f- is going on, and why the, have we got a great big fish tank in the middle of a f***ing field in Oxfordshire? And where's the water coming from? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was more fun when it all leaked out. <laughs> um <clears throat> I, I actually got tipped off that that was there. Uh, somebody, I think it was actually Mr. Terrell. I'm glad someone told you. <laughs> well, I got there on Friday, but 
Dave, Dave, go and have a look behind there. So what I'd look is like, what's that for? I can't tell you. Oh, cheers, mate. But uh, yeah, and, 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 and what what a what a show that was. Well, both shows, the the Mind Lab uh, entrance of the the ladies on horses and the mermaid were, were outstanding and and so well choreographed. Certainly, very interesting and out of the box thinking, as far as I was concerned. Oh, it was. It was brilliant. And and LP are sponsoring the Spring Detectable this year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... They're sponsoring the spring one again, as they did last year. And uh, they put in a lot of effort and a lot of time to help him promote it and uh, push the event and everything. So hopefully it will be a great success for us and for LP. Who knows what we're going to find this year. (laughs) And let's just talk about that. Last year you had one of the finds of the year. It was pretty spectacular, yeah. I, I wished it had uh, have happened a little bit further into uh, Spring Detectable so I could have seen a few of the other finds that were made because there was some great stuff that came up. Mm. But my whole weekend from 35, 40 minutes after the start was <laughs> looking at gold and silver coins, unfortunately, in abundance. Great abundance. <laughs> and, and Yeah, gr- great memory. Really good, really fantastic memory. Since the... Uh, the event itself and the uh, Andrew Winter and the other lads who, who made the discovery left the site. Uh, I think it was about the Thursday after Detectable, if I'm right. Has there been? Have you been back to the site in in relation to that with archaeologists or anything? Yes, the whole site has now been uh, had magnetometry. Uh, it's been geophysed. It's had a proper archaeological excavation. Andrew and the other, a few of the other guys are actually involved in searching the site and recovering some uh, more of the coins that were still discovered there. Um, but now everything is out of the ground. It's been closed down, refilled. Uh, the reports are all done. Uh, all the the, the uh, archaeological reports are done anyway on the geophysics and the magnetometry and everything. I still think we're waiting on the reports on the, the hoard and the coins itself. But, um, yeah, otherwise everything's out of the ground. It's all progressing slowly. As a lot of you are aware, the wonderful treasure process takes its time. And there was is an awful lot to uh, go through um, with that hoard. So, yeah, a couple of years, I think we might be getting somewhere. So are you, uh, uh, are you privy to be able to offer any information about the um, magnetometer and GFS results? Or are we waiting for the final uh, outcome? You'll probably have to wait for the final outcome. I um, don't want to say too much because it may influence people's plans at this year's spring detectable, which I wouldn't want to change anybody's minds about where they might want to go or might not want to go. But when they did the geosis and the magnetometry, they looked at a large section of that valley where the horde came out of and there was a few interesting points. Really? That were, that were, that were, yeah, that were noted. Well, I'm sure, obviously... So, yeah. That that will excite people who who were attending uh, the event uh, f- straight away. Yeah, as I said, who, 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 lightning doesn't really, well, doesn't normally strike twice in the same place, but you never know. We've we've all seen people hit by lightning more than once, <laughs> all over YouTube. <laughs> I, I, I've seen that on YouTube. Yeah. I really, really do hope <coughs> that's the case, uh, Mark. I mean, this is my. First spring detectable, uh, other detectable, the two, two, the past two detectables myself and Luke have attended, and we've seen a, a massive variety of beautiful finds, Roman, medieval uh, relics, coins, all sorts. So, I mean, I was devastated to have not been there last last year. I had to make the decision not to attend because of work, um, but obviously we were privy ourselves to North of Time metal detecting groups. Um, feed and we were given permission to share their images and videos and it was I spent the whole of Saturday I said right I'm not going out this is too important um, absolutely dazzling to behold and, and, and I hope that something is there that I can actually see with my own, own eyes the process by the archaeologists and such like that take place who are you laughing at now? It, oh Karen it's <laughs> She's not making not making tea or anything like that, you know. I could really do with a cup. Do you like that? Look? I like that. It's I good, though. I do yeah, like that. Yeah. Gold, gold, you've got Goldsy to thank for those. I was just sort of trying to hint at a cup of tea. Goldsy does make some splendid uh, merchandise, doesn't he? He does, yeah, yeah. 
couldn't, under- couldn't understand the word he said, but uh, some of the things, and he's made a lot of, I've seen a hell of a lot of things, and his hoodies and what have you, even brilliant, fair play. Yeah, great, yeah, fantastic. So what do we else, apart from potentially some um, awesome finds again, what else are we looking forward to at Spring Detectable? What else are we looking forward to? Well, the event itself, because it's a great get-together for everybody, you know. Uh, that's what Detectable is all about, sort of bringing people together and having a laugh. If we find something, it's a real bonus. Um, but the, the main emphasis of it is is all getting together, talking about what we love and uh, sharing stories and, and having, having a, a, a giggle, basically. Mm-hmm. So that's what we've got to look forward to. I can't give too much away. Obviously. Because I want to say about, about what... You know, it was just like, oh, Pete's doing this, and that's going to happen. LP's up to this, and oh yeah, there's blah blah blah, and the, you know, it, it ruins the whole yeah, size yeah, yeah. of it. Then. Oh. You know, I've got to keep a little bit of. Woo-hoo. What different organisations uh, will be there? Companies and whatnot? Then bands, music. Are we? Is there anything of that ilk? Bands, music. Are we having any bands this year? I think we scrapped the bands at Spring Detective. Well, no, we've got karaoke. We're going for karaoke. Oh, and I'm riding. Honest to God, you, you'll be like, Dave Sadler can sing. We What's happening? 70s, 70s, 80s and 90s karaoke. So we are the entertainment. Mate, I'm bang on for that. I'll be there. First and foremost, first name down. <laughs> Wicked, mate. Shock, shocker with me tones. In fact, there'll be someone will be signing me up. Brilliant. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, man. Well, I, I've got, got some contacts, you know, from, from the past. So I invite them down for the, the night that you're going to be there. Singing. Well, look at one of them strange people that you, we both know, Sean Histed Todd. Uh, he's been a friend of mine for numerous years. We've <laughs> also, And then I see you pop up on his timeline. I'm like, how's he know him? And you've, you've known each other for oh, multiple years. Many, many. I think I've known Sean since I was about, what, let's say 12, 13. And, you know, he's such a, a lovely, kind, helpful bloke. But I think if you met him in the flesh, you'd pap yourself somewhat. There's been a couple of times he's freaked the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sh- but I love him a bit. He's great. <laughs> Sean Histed Todd, if, if any of you want like music, he owns a radio station, online music radio station, called Wicked Spin Radio. And it's uh, it's it's delightful. Uh, they, they do a hell of a lot of shows, hell of a lot of music, and they also put on. I think it's in May. Uh, Alice is down the rabbit hole, which is a music festival for uh, what type of genre? What type of genre would you say? It's a it's a uh, peculiar bunch. Indie yeah. alternative. Alternative indie kind yeah. of yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll go along with that. I'll go. can't speak highly enough of Sean. I'm supposed to have met him a number of times, but uh, been unable to. And because obviously things that I'd done in the past, he had interest in, and uh, that's how we we got in contact. So uh, yeah, big up to Sean. In fact, as I said to him on one of his uh, posts on Facebook this week, some of his uh, posts this week, archaeological wise, have been helping me instead of me going out and finding it. I've just been getting them off him. So. <laughs> Great. I quite often Nick Sean's post and think, oh, I'll share that one. <laughs> so, uh, good evening to Sean Histed Todd. Uh, in fact, I'm going to have to tag him in this while we're speaking in a minute to say, look who's on. <laughs> yeah. So, that's Spring Detectable. Uh, we're all looking for it, forward to it greatly. There's a lot going to be going yep. on. There's the potential of uh, from from archaeological results of a lot going on. And then it's on to Detectable. Yep. Well, you've got summer now in the middle of that one as well. We've thrown a summer one in there. Oh, are you? I didn't know that one. Yeah. Ah, yeah. There's been a Facebook event page that went up about a week ago. Um, we've got uh, an arrangement with a nice estate in North Wales, not far from a place called Nanook. I know it. Um, they've uh, got about 8,000 acres, and they've allocated us around 1,000 acres of nice short sh- short sheep grazed pasture that covers the, 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 their part of uh, wonderful Wales there. It goes up to the edge of a hill fort. They've got um, abandoned gold mines on there and the wow. legend of King Arthur's sword and ley lines and stone circles. and It's, it's quite a, a magical, interesting place and they wanted us to do something up there. So we said, all right then. So uh, July the 4th and 5th, 
I think it is, we're heading up to North Wales for the weekend um, for our first summer event. They want us to do a few years up there and with six and a half thousand acres and hill forts and things. Who were we to say no? Well, and, uh, I'll and again, certainly be coming to that, LP, mate. I think LP are going to be the uh, the sponsors of that one again from uh, what Pete said. He's, he's up to supporting us because awesome. uh, we work really well with them. Yeah. So that, I'm really looking forward to that. And then after that will be the main detectable in September. I'll definitely, I'll definitely be at the the North Wales one. I'm minutes from I'm from Ellesmere Port originally, yeah, and I'm not far from there now where I live. And it's uh, I'm uh, about ten minutes from the border, so uh, I'll definitely be there. Brilliant! You've got no excuse. Oh, I, I guarantee September's I'll be there. Coming up, September's coming up. Uh, this is our last year in Oxfordshire. Uh, after this, I know many people will be here. Please just uh, hear me say that we're. Uh, very likely heading down to Wiltshire. Not twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Where did you say it yeah, was? Twenty twenty one spring. Ah, mold. Nanuk is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Nanuk is going to be the uh, summer event on the fourth and fifth of July. Do you know? I'm just looking where that is. And gospel truth, Mark. I actually yeah. uh, not very far from there at all. I was actually on when I first started in with the archaeology. Uh, back in 2001, 2002, with a, a chap called Mark Olley. Um, two of the sites that we were on aren't very far away from that at all. So, and, and I'm, I'm minutes away again is where I'd served my apprenticeship at British Air, Aerospace, now Airbus. So, uh, and in fact, <laughs> I, well, I'm looking at it and I'm not, I think my brother's actually moved not far from there at all as well. Recently, I helped him move. So, uh, yeah, I know. We'll it have a place to stay then, mate. Oh, absolutely. I could drive home every night for that. No problem. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, certainly be there. Well, obviously, drop us all the information on that, and we'll we'll get all that Good out place. and about. And, uh, yeah, I would no idea about that, as so you said. So that's uh, a bonus for the show. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries, mate. Nice little surprise. But, um, yeah, we're going to have gold panning and everything up there. I think the estate are even going to, uh, anybody that's into trout fishing, I think they'll be able to use their trout fishing lakes. Uh, four by four course and all kinds of uh, stuff, clay pigeon shooting and everything they do up there, which we can all indulge in if we want. So, we, we've got nothing else. You've got half the um, bits and bobs going on already. Yeah, there's going to be loads of other stuff, you know, and hopefully we're going to turn the summer one into even more of a family thing. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's nice to bring the family, have a bit of a time away from them, with, from them, with them. <laughs> How are you going to cope this far north anyway, mate? I don't know. I'm going, I'm starting to learn Welsh already. <laughs> Yaki da. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people will will also uh, be interested in that because obviously uh, most of the major events, if not all, are are down south. I know Scotty B's running one more north this year, but uh, that's yeah. perfect. There'll be a hell of a lot of people interested in that. In fact, I know a hell of a lot of local um, groups that I can let know, the likes of Rex and Metal Detecting Group and whatnot, will definitely be wanted to uh, to learn more about that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, Fantastic. I've got all, all weekend. I might finish work tomorrow, I'll be home at two. So it's fr- Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and obviously we'll get as much information out as we can. So uh, yeah, that's, place, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, in fact, if he's listening, Graham Stokes... Um, he's been to all the detectables and he's a friend of the magazine he does some field reporting for us and he's a good friend of Luke's he's uh, he's in mould all the time because that's where he's from so I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll definitely be there as well <laughs> so, so can't, can't wait uh, tickling trout nah, that's not for me though I'll eat, I'll, I don't even eat trout to be honest I've cod in batter that'll do me <laughs> Any 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 other any other information about uh, summer detectable land? Well, um, no, not really at the minute. Apart from the, the the amazing area, the hill forts, the the ley lines, the stone circles, King Arthur's sword, the gold, the gold pan, and the gold mines. Uh, oh, did I say? Oh, there was a horde of Bronze Age axes as well found near there. Um, the, the summer one's going to be awesome. At the very best, we'll have. Absolutely amazing scenery to wander around and look at, um, even if we don't find anything. I'm just. But I'm pretty confident we will. I've just actually thought, mate. There's a, an artifact in the British Museum. I'm just pulling up the page now, and hopefully I'll be able to share it. 
It's called the Mold Gold Cape, and it was a, 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 a prehistoric sheet gold um, gold cape, oh, obviously. I, think I know the thing you mean. So yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to open a link. Yeah, we could do with finding a couple of those. <laughs> right. So if I uh, if I go on there, Luke, I'm just about to share the screen. If that's okay. Come on, you bloody thing. That one. There you are. Right, so StreamYard is sharing my window. So if I jump onto that, uh, you'll be able to see. Oh, delete the gold cape. No, we can't. So we'll go back. I will open up another yeah. window. Not that one. Just click on images. Well, there you go. Oh, there you go, yeah. That is the thing that I was thinking of. Wow, that's lovely. Isn't it? Well, we could do with finding a few of those. So, to be honest, where the site or the, the location, uh, Nanak is, mould is, is a matter yeah. of minutes away. So, you know, there's something prehistoric Brilliant. from the area that's, that's substantial. So that gives everybody an idea of there's the potential. Lot. Yeah, there's a lot of recorded prehistoric activity on the estate as well because I've got an archaeological report uh, which I've been another one, which I've been given um, by the estate, where um, a group has done a lot of magnetometry and geophysics uh, physics on the edge of one of the hill forts. Yeah, and there is some very interesting stuff there, like large metal anomalies. Marvelous. Obviously, we won't go digging that up without the archives because I can imagine they'd be very, very upset if we did. So that particular area will be cordoned off because they've done all the, taken all the time to do the geophysics and everything. Um, and I think we'll be digging there before they are. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait, mate. Can't wait. So what, what date's that? Oh, looking forward to it. That's the uh, 4th and the 5th of July. 4th and 5th of July. I think it's the weekend that is on. That's Independence Day as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So you're going to have to have some form of Independence Day shenanigans going on, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's Saturday and a Sunday. Yeah, you're right. Brilliant. Yeah, that's a great bit of news. Thank you very much for that. And hopefully uh, everybody who's listening and watching, and you can go away and obviously go to the detectable website or the events page for the Metal Detective. Is that right? Uh, currently, we have the event on a Facebook event page through the Metal Detectives group, um, but it will all the event information will, in the next week or so, be up on the website and tickets will be available. Brilliant. Uh, Cost-wise? Uh, it'll be the same as most, all the other detectables. No, no difference. There won't be a price increase on the detectables until next year because everything's going to go up. Isn't it? Mark, can I ask... Yeah. There's obviously as there's a lot of uh, hysteria, not the, the night hawking hysteria, another type of hysteria, with the coronavirus malarkey that's going on at the moment. So have you got any plans in place just in case the government make any decisions that may stop the uh, public in places getting together? Um, I think from what I've been looking at, they're talking about mass gatherings of more than 5,000 people. We'll be all right, As then. we have only sold a maximum of 500 tickets, I don't think we're going to need to worry. And I think most of the guys will probably stay away from everybody <laughs> else when they're out in the field. So I, I don't think most people will have anything to worry about. And anybody that is concerned, I just say make sure that, that we are, we're going to have uh, water on site that you will be able to use for washing. Make sure you bring plenty of soap, hand sanitizers, bacterial wipes. If you're at all freaked out or worried by any kind of coronavirus, you've got more chance of catching the flu, though. Marvellous. Well, obviously, that is... Obviously, somebody did mention it to me, what's going to happen if this coronavirus does. So, obviously, I've asked the question. There's your answer. Don't worry. You'll be sorted. It's less than 5,000 people. We've been getting a few emails. We've been getting a few emails and questions from people about it. And as I said, if you're, if you're in the slightest bit concerned, then just make sure that you've got everything that you need to keep yourself nice and clean. Absolutely. Marvellous. Next up, Detectable. Yeah. This is year four or year five? Five. Five. And that's five years Detectable now, isn't it, this year? I'm just asking the boss. <laughs> four, four, four. She's just counting fingers. It's four. 
Four years, four years, but more than Texas. Yeah. Ten years. Metal detectives. Ten, yeah, ten years of the metal detectives this year, and four years of detective. And uh, how many we've done? What? Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we've probably we've done a few now. Mm. With the two last year, we got three this year. So yeah, they're all adding up. And that's the big one, obviously. We've got three lined up for next year as well. Yeah, it's our last year in Oxfordshire this year. Um, we've saved the best land for last. We've got um, just, just over 800 acres of new ground, which we haven't previously um, made available or, or been able to get on. It's all about in depth crop rotation, basically. Mm. But this year, I, I think we'll be having the best year and the last year in Oxford as well for a while before we move off to Wiltshire for 2021. And is there any news on title sponsor for that event yet, or is it still still under we, lock and key? A, a little bit of, we, we haven't nailed down anything yet. We haven't signed any agreements with anybody, but we've spoken to a couple of manufacturers who expressed an interest pretty much straight after, after well, actually during the last session. <laughs> and, and, um, and that no, being the big... Sorry. Sorry? We haven't nailed we haven't nailed anything down yet, Dave. Sorry, mate. Oh no, no, no worries. Just questions I'm throwing at you. Um, no, that's fine. You chuck them. I'm chucking them. I'm chucking them. In fact, I'm not seeing any questions pop up uh, from listeners or viewers tonight. So, please, if you do have any questions regarding the metal no detectives, listening. any of the detectables, etc., uh, etc., et please pop them on either. If you're watching on Facebook, they'll come up on the screen. If they on YouTube, they'll pop up on the screen, and I'm also keeping my eye on Spreaker uh, to see if there's anything going on on there. So if you do have any questions uh, for Mark or even for Karen, please give me a shout, uh, and we'll we'll get them asked and hopefully answered as best we can. I'm loving my new green screen. I got a new green screen. It's uh, it fits and it it's, it's very not good, it's not uh, got cre. The original one was a cheap quality one ended up being, and I couldn't iron the... Well, Mrs. Sadler couldn't iron the creases out because it melted it. <laughs> so there's a big hole in it behind the chair and the other one. So I ordered another one the other night, and it actually looks... Uh, if, I, if I move my shoulder that way, you can't see that pixelation. So And a new chair as well, going up with the Joneses. You put the feed on the conversation. Karen's put the summer detectable feed and the link thingy on the on the conversation thing excellent so uh apparently she just informed me that will I'm still waiting for this cup of tea though you're joking <laughs> <laughs> no i haven't got it yet oh, i'll tell you what Seriously, mate i've got a mouth like a nun's flip like gandhi flip flop look at that one a, nun, a nun's gandhi flip flop <laughs> Yeah, I know. I nearly said something that I probably shouldn't have said, so I just changed it, and it just it didn't really come out right. But I've got a very dry mouth. Right, I'm just still waiting for a cup of tea. I'm just getting to the uh, the conversation to see what the uh, the thing is. What's it called? Uh, do you know when things run slow? Do my head in. Right, there's that. Uh, no, can't see the comments. Don't know where they are, so I'll leave it. Back, back to detectable. <laughs> I, it's 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 not only a metal detected event, and out of all the events that I've been to or rallies or what have you, there's nothing quite like the beast that is detectable. It's um, it's so much more than that, isn't it? That was our whole idea. As I said, I come from a bit of a um, uh, musicy kind of background, anyway, being into. Um, uh, club promotion and whatnot, DJing and everything for quite a few years and organising festivals and raves and whatnot. So there's an element of that that kind of goes into detective all funnily enough, the clues in the name. It's a it's a, a metal detecting festival. It's designed to bring, as I said to you, everybody together to have a good laugh, have a really good time, share stories, talk about fines, um, go out in the field, hopefully find something. You know, I've just have a really nice weekend with really nice, like-minded people, which I think we've managed now to pull off reasonably well. Still plenty of room for improvement and plenty of areas that we will improve and uh, things will grow each year and, and get better and better. But um, at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it's all going. And one thing you can't personally control or anybody else is the weather. And last year's weather was... Could, could you have asked for better? 
No, I ask every year for good weather, and I think someone finally bloody listened to me last year because uh, we didn't have the, the normal wind that we have at that time of year up there that ends up blowing marquees and traders and everything all over the place. Oh, you got a cup of tea. Thanks, Finally thanks, Karen. Thanks, just thanks, Karen. Where's he? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously yourself running around, the people who are actually working, not the people participating. Obviously, the people participating struggled to a degree with the heat, but for yourself... I was walking around with a microphone and it it, it damn near killed me. Uh, and the, the, the sun, was hot, oh, it? the sun tans that people were getting as well. There were so many people coming into the marquee to escape the heat at one point. Brilliant. Yeah, the sunburn was brilliant. Yeah, I was what, <laughs> looking at lobsters wandering in from the field, thinking, "What what what what, what day are we in? What month are we in?" <laughs> so yeah, we'll hope never to get happened that. before. And North Wales, uh, if if it's if it's good, if the summer's good, you know, you've more or likely got the uh, the potential of some heat there as well. Dave, the summer's going to be awesome. Don't you think we've had enough rain to last us for the next three freaking years? Yeah, absolutely. Steam There's fields out there that look like lakes. We need scuba gear and boats. Scuba gear and boats to go to Mind you saying that, Mark, we've had up, up north, we've had nothing but cloud for the past four or five days no rain at all it's just been just been nice to be honest all right no it's just been wet really wet down that'll be, that'll it's be the north south divide <laughs> yeah. yeah i thought it was meant to be grim up north not grim, not grim down south nah, we're hard up north we can take it <laughs> it's the it's the hot, <laughs> it's the hot, with, we hot weather we can't get our head around mate there's not a lot of me you know i'm I mean, I'm a skinny little git. I just feel the cold, I guess. You know, can't help it. <laughs> I do have. Uh, in fact, I'll do that at the end of the show. It's it's easier doing it that way. I've got a couple of images. Uh, one of them, which I'm sure it's not its final, uh, in its final work, but currently we do have the uh, Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine uh, issue six, I think it is, which will be four spring detectable Brilliant. uh we've got Brilliant. that currently uh in its it's not its final design uh but we've got it basically covered now just going to uh share the screen again if luke allows me in yep yeah, he's sharing me so there you go. That's the Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine currently for Spring Detectable. Uh, it's not its final design at all. Uh, Luke's, Luke keeps uh, thinking differently and finding better things, but that's what it currently looks like anyway. So uh, we can't wait to get that out and about. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well, you know, Mark... We we can't thank you enough for allowing you to uh, for allowing us to be a part of of the events and uh, creating magazines for it as well because now as you might have seen on that the National Council for Metal Detecting are, we're also publishing digging deep uh, and we'll be doing that as a um, I can't remember the word supplement as a pull out from the centre page of the magazine so hopefully um, visitors to the events where we've got to produce magazines for this year will be able to. Learn more about the um, the National Council for Metal Detecting. So uh, I, I can't wait to see that one myself because I've, I've got an I've, I've got an idea of what's in there. Uh, we've had a gentleman today who's um, we're speaking to next week, who's got a competition on at the moment, but he's uh, he's just organised a, a page, uh, yeah, a full page spread today. So we've got uh, Graham Dempsey and his composite cleaning stuff coming into the magazine as well so a little bit more information oh, which awesome, actually. Oh, it certainly is um i'll be dis well, graham lives in Aylesbury. he's a local boy now you see no nah, but he's he's from he's from up north he's one of us no nah, he's, he's that doesn't count anymore he's down <laughs> south now mate but he won't speak like down no. south as will he no give him some time give him some time he's only been here a little while <laughs> it'll, it'll work i'll work i'll work on him I'll work on them, don't you worry. And I see them. I've got, I, but no, those composite cleaning pencils and the uh, the crystalline wax and that that you're doing is awesome. 
I think he's also got, well, he's told me he's got some big news coming in the next week as well regarding the potential of another product. So uh, I'm looking forward to learning more from Graham. I've uh, I've got to sit down this Good weekend and, and work with the composite pencil and the, uh, the what's the wax called? I forgot the name of the wax. Where is it? There it is. Oh, he's got it there, that's handy. Preserve it, wax. There it is. Oh, look at that. Da-da. Here's one I found earlier. <laughs> so we'll be uh, we'll be discussing <laughs> that next week uh, at length. So there's also, for those listening, a competition that Graham is currently running via the um, big metal detecting radio show there it is radio show facebook group so basically for those of you who are members of that for some reason luke was calling me then i don't know what what's happening but for uh for those of it's probably because i was still sharing i hadn't stopped it so i do apologize if that was the case um you have to go on to to be a member of the uh, the Facebook group for the all uh, sorry the big metal detecting radio show and TV show. So you have to be a member of that to find the original post uh, and and basically it's a like, comment, and share one. Graham will uh, gift everybody an individual number, and then next week a random number generator will be used to um, to win both the composite pencil and the preserve it wax. So, uh, and, and as I say, hopefully, or not hopefully, definitely, he's going to be coming with some news regarding uh, a new product. So, again, can't wait for that. Ooh. Apologies a minute ago. I think I forgot to unshare what was going on. So, you may have had all sorts on the images. Um, LP have asked if it comes back up. No, I forgot what it was now. Um LP, could you ask that question was that again? That said, was that the one that said, how do I find between the, the time between the that was detectives it. and detectable to do Historica as well? Yes, that was the question. Uh, with great difficulty, but again, I'm really lucky to work with some wonderful people like uh, Alan Smith, Adam Staples and William Hayward at Historica. They're all absolutely awesome. And uh, thank God everybody does what they say on the tin again. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's working quite well. So it, it's, it's down to working with good people, I guess, as to how I find time. And for those who don't know what Historica is, Mark, could you explain a, a bit about that, please? Historica, Coins and Antiquities Auctions, which are part of Hanson's Auctioneers, uh, that myself heads up along with William Haywood, uh, Adam Staples and Alan Smith of Essex Coins. So obviously people will come to you, uh, you'll look at the, see if it's worthwhile putting it into the auction, uh, give it a, a slight value, a slight potential, tell them what the potential is of, of selling the item. That goes through the auctions and uh, people make money. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, so you pretty much hit the nail on the head. Uh, people will come and they'll bring stuff to either myself, Adam, Alan or Will. We will appraise it and value it and stick it into the auction. The next one's coming up on the 26th and the 27th of March. Um, so it's over two days. We've got the coins and antiquity. That's in Etwell in Derbyshire. And if anybody does want to put anything in, there is literally about what, a few days left, I think, to uh, before the closing date of the sale. Catalogue wants to go live about the 13th. Um, and then, as I said, the sale's on the 26th and the 27th. So uh, I'm I'm, not, I'm just looking on the maps to see how far I am from that. It's not far at all. Uh, 32 miles, so, yeah, it's not far at all. Oh, you should nip down. In fact, down. do you know what? Come, it, come and say hello. Where I work, it's about, I'd say, 10 minutes away. Definitely. Well, you know you know what you've got to do. Come down over lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tea. Absolutely. That's quite shocking. I didn't yeah, realise how it is. Going. So it, it's it's on the between you Toxter and Derby uh, near Hilton. So yeah, definitely do that. It's not far at all. Surprisingly, I thought it was a lot further yeah, away. It'd be good to see you. Yes, it'd be fantastic. I think we'll all, all be up there. Me, me, Adam, and Alan, and that. So and Will, so everybody mm. should be there. It'd be fun. Come and have a cup. I've got a few questions. Uh, first one: What's the best individual find you have ever been privy to? The best 
the best. Uh, probably the Sandridge Horde. Tell us about that a little bit about that. I've not heard of that one. Uh, <laughs> funny story, but basically when we opened Hidden History, um, obviously we were selling metal detectors, funnily enough, and a guy came in one day, a guy called uh, Wesley Carrington, and basically he said, I've always fancied giving metal detectors a go. Um, I haven't got a huge amount of cash. I've got about 130, 140 quid. Uh, what can I get for that? And guess what? It was a Garrett Ace 150. <laughs> so he ended up buying a Garrett Ace 150 and uh, he left the shop. And the next day, I get a phone call and he's like, can I come and see you? And he was like, yeah, okay. Um, so he came in after he finished work. And he said, right, uh, I just went out in some woods near my house last night. I was like, did you have permission? He was like, no, no, it was just woods. I was like, mate, every every bit of land is owned by someone. You need permission before you go somewhere. Oh, I didn't know that, he said. But anyway, cut a long story short, he puts 55 Roman gold solidus on the table. Joking. And says, can, can you tell me if these are real? My, my jaw nearly hit the floor. And I was like, yeah, words that I won't repeat right now. Um, but I, I was quite shocked. And I said, look, Wes, you've got to report this. He said, I'll tell you what, you do it. So um, he left 55 Roman gold coins with me. I phoned the museum and said to the fine liaison officer at the time, who was Julian Waters, I said, Julian, I need to come down and see you, please. I went down to see him and uh, did pretty much the same thing as Wes had done to me, put these 55 Roman gold coins on the table, and then there was silence for a minute, and Julian disappeared, and after the museum came back in, uh, and the next day we were down on site with a, a mini digger and the landowner's permission, and we excavated the area, and I think there was a total of 159 Roman gold solidus wow. that was unearthed, and they are currently living in St Albans Museum on display. Uh, I think it's a uh, Veranalian Museum. I think it's uh, the second largest Roman gold coin hoard ever found in the UK, or was at the time of discovery, and if anything else has been found since then. But uh, despite the fact that um, Wes, the finder, did not have permission, because he had declared it and done the, the right thing, uh, I believe the final say in reward attribution is had by the Secretary of State, who awarded Wesley 40% of the value because he'd done the right thing and reported and recorded it. Yeah. As, a, as opposed to selling it on the black market, as we know, lands you in 25 years in jail. It certainly so, does. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, good old Wes, he did the right thing. It's now living in St Albans Museum. Um, he got 40% of the final value, which I think was about 140 or 150 grand. You had my mouth for gape just at the start of that story. Well, I as soon I as you... up about seven... I dug up about 77 Solidus, and because they were all the same, very similar emperors, after about number 15 or 20, it was like, please, let it be a different emperor. <laughs> but it was still still a great experience, but you know, you're just like, oh, come on, it's going to not be Arcadius, or Honorius, or Valentinian, please. Or Gr- oh, there's a Gratian. <laughs> Yeah, and then obviously the hoard at the Spring Detectable was a, another great one. Uh, that was very memorable. That took a, a whole weekend as well, a good few days. And then on some as well as all the archaeological reports are done. Mm. And we've been lucky enough to have a few hoards with uh, the metal detectives as well, Axeds. And uh, in November last year, we block lifted a Roman, gold co- a Roman coin hoard out of um, a field in Oxfordshire, not far from the detective site, funnily enough. Wow. I know you had the uh, uh, the bronze axe or that was uh, your Christmas dig in 2018. Yeah, uh, we had those. Simon found those at that dig, and two months before that, I found a hoard of axe as well um, on another of our digs in October. Wow, brilliant! Uh, what's your best? Yeah, we were quite lucky. What's your best personal find? got to be the horde of accents, I guess. And what was the buzz like when you actually got them? Oh, digging up one was absolutely awesome. I was like, yes, I have waited 20 odd years to find an accent. I was over the moon. And then the detector went off again and I was like, oh, you are joking. And then I looked in the hole after moving some earth and there was like another three and I was like, oh, shh. Oh, great. Uh, now, I don't get, now I don't get to keep them anymore. 
uh, one, I was over the moon when I found one. I was a little deflated when I realised it was a horde, but at the same time, I was excited. But I just, I've always wanted an, I, I love uh, Bronze Age uh, artifacts, swords, uh, uh, spearheads, uh, anything like that. I have a, a real passion for it. And I was hoping to have found one that I could keep. Uh, and then, obviously, it being part of a horde, and now I think Oxfordshire Museum will probably purchase it, and I now I've got to go and find one that I can keep. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, it's top of my bucket list, Mark, and uh, I'm, I'm desperate to find something not dissimilar to that. I, I'm not bothered about the horde. Even if it was the smallest axe going, it would be fine by me. Does Karen detect? Not so much anymore, because obviously we've got the little ones. So we've got two young kids. Uh, I've got two teenage kids as well. Um, but between uh, running the metal detectives with me and Detective Hall and working for the NHS and being a full-time mother to our two wonderful little beans, um, she doesn't really have a lot of time to get out detected anymore. I'm lucky. I've got excuses. It's my job, Karen. <laughs> or, I'm taking the dogs out. Or, I'm taking the dogs out for a quick walk, Karen. And then two and a half hours later, I come back covered in mud with a dirty detector and the dogs are filthy and everything. And, uh, yeah, but um, I, I'm lucky she doesn't quite have that that, um, that that good fortune. No, but no, she used to, but not so much. What is her role in the metal detectives group? <laughs> well, basically, the metal detectives uh, or detective all probably it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Karen and the other admin that do all the behind-the-scenes work, you know, the, uh, answering all the emails, sorting out all the booking systems, keeping the website updated, doing all the fines reports, um, booking all the, the digs up. Uh, they, they do an awful lot that people don't see and, and obviously don't appreciate either. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't be what it is again without Karen or Lisa uh, and uh, loads of other people that help out. The, the Toms that I've got and the Heathers and, uh, yeah, all those people out there that just give the time and put in the effort for us mm. and help us. What is the general area that the Metal Detectives uh, organise digs? Obviously, Wales is... is different than normal but what's the general area wales is a new wales is a new one for us um, a lot of our digs are around oxfordshire buckinghamshire we have missions in Bar uh, bedfordshire hampshire berkshire um we're up in norfolk uh, next weekend for another one of our weekenders we we go all over the bloody shop do you know i'd love to uh, the, the the one thing that i'd like the one and only thing I'd like to live south for, more south, more southern, would be to actually participate with the likes of yourselves, the like of, um, let me just read it so I remember, Southeast Metal Detecting Digs, uh, Rallies, Luke's Group, and, uh, you know, the LP things, because there's so much goes on down south that I just can't get to. Uh, it's it's more, more than difficult. There's a lot of good dig organisers. There's a lot of really good dig organisers that find, have some great sites mm. um, down south, as there is up north as well, though. So, you know, Do you know I actually a lot of us southerners want to head north. I actually received a uh, message from a metal detectorist last night, uh, this morning, um, telling, asking me, did I, do a, did I detect in a certain area? I said, yep, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, he said, right, I, I remember you've run a dig there in the past. Um, do you know this place? I went, yeah, yeah, it's uh, one of my permission. You went, well, uh, there's a... A certain metal detecting organisation, uh, you know, organised digs who were on your site uh, this weekend. And it, it's a bit gutting when that happens, uh, you know, but you can't blame the farmer. You, you know, if they've offered money, you, you can't blame the farmer for doing it. But it was just a bit of a kick in the arse for me this morning, unfortunately. Uh, Dave, we had it a couple of weeks ago. The farmer did not make us aware at all that he had allowed another group on the field that we went on. Um, it was only when we were there that someone turned around to me and went, I've been here before. Yeah. And I was like, what? Uh, and then speaking to a couple of other people and doing a little bit more research, it turned out that another group, or a club, sorry, had been on this field before. Luckily, it was obviously quite some time ago and technology has changed and we found absolutely crap loads of stuff. Mm. But for a moment there, I was thinking, oh, crap. But it just goes to show that you can't always take what the land yeah, yeah. or the farmer says to you. I mean, the other thing... Gospel, the, take it with a pinch of salt. He's, he's, the landowner has told them, well, they're advertising the fact that it's undetected land, but I know different. <laughs> anyway, 
That's... Well, yeah. If, if, if we always, if we ever get a permission, personally, I always say, if there's a lo- if there's a local detectorist that does it, and I can get hold of him, most people when they do permissions, me personally, when I go to my own permissions, I always go to the same two fields. So I always say, look, which fields do you go on? We'll stay off of them. Yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of other fields and plenty of other land. If the landowner's insistent on us going somewhere, I want to try and keep as many people happy. I don't go out to piss people off, you know. So if I can keep the local detectorist happy if the landowner said go there then i will um and i will avoid if possible going to places where other groups have been if the landowner is honest with me mm. um to, to avoid pissing people off as well yeah um easier said than done sometimes. It, it certainly is certainly is what's the in fact uh I organised a ruck of uh, events for the mayor of Rochdale's uh, charity fund a few years ago and somebody actually a I was told another case, it's just occurred to me this, um, another case that, oh yeah, it has been detected before, and three brothers who actually paid to come on the event, because they said there's not much local that they could go on, uh, I've been detecting it for years and actually brought fines to show me. So, uh, <laughs> happens all the time. What's the relationship with LP? You and Pete are good friends. Very good friends. Pete is brilliant. He's one of those people um, that does what they say on the tin. Um, he, he's, he's very trusted, um, a, a great guy, uh, runs a great business, goes above and beyond for, for us and his customers. You know, he basically, he's one of the good guys. There's, there's, a, there's enough bad eggs out there and we get a publicity. Um, but I think Pete and LP, Ash and their team do a brilliant job and we're, we're pleased to work with them, happy to work with them. He is a top egg. Uh, nothing but respect for for Pete. He's uh, he's done a lot for us, and he's been very supportive of everything we've done, and uh, communicates with both myself and Luke very much regularly. So uh, fair yeah, to, kudos to Pete. We like Pete. How yeah, how yeah, do you join the metal detectives? Well, now we've made that incredibly easy. What you can do is you can visit the website at www.metaldetective.co.uk. And if you click on register, it will all become very apparent and very easy as to be how to join us at this precise moment in time. Our new membership year is starting very soon. We're drawing to the close of our old one. Not everybody rejoins, but many people do. Um, and as soon as the membership is full again, it will close. I'm just on there now having a look. Yeah, very, very easy. Certainly Go to is. register. Sorry? You're on the register bit and poof. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Ah. Some, uh, you've got a nice uh, gallery of some of the members' finds as well on there. Yeah, we've got a great members' area as well, which you get access to once you've joined. So all the digs are listed up on the, the website for the members to see. They all go, also get emailed out. And that's www.metaldetectives, all one word, .co.uk. And you can obviously also find the Metal Detectives on Facebook and on Twitter. Because uh, a lot of the things that um, you find, again, archaeological, I carry over to the, you know, share the links as well there. And uh, what was it this week? You... And ditto. Sorry? I said, and ditto. I, I, I do exactly the same. <laughs> and, do you know, when the website page actually started up, um, we, myself and Luke scheduled posts sometime days in advance because uh, we do it sort of one an hour uh, try and fill up the day instead of bunging things all the way through and somebody contacted me playing holy hell because I'd copied one of your links I was like I haven't <laughs> well they put it on first and <laughs> so what are you trying to say that I copied him yes you copied them why are you trying to do the same thing I'm not it's, it's been them, it's been scheduled for ages these things are all over the internet. They're very, very easy to find. <laughs> Do you often get out to detect now with the stress of running digs? Can you see? Can you still see detecting as a hobby? Yes, I love it. Um, I read something once that a very famous person, a, a guy called Confucius, apparently once said, if you find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that is pretty much how I feel. As I said, I've got, I'm lucky enough to have the excuse uh, that, to Karen that it's my job. So I need to go detecting. I need to go and recce this field or check that out. I need to take the dogs out for a walk because I've, I've got three dogs that need to have regular exercise. 
uh, as do I and my metal detectors. So yes, I still do. Not as often as I'd like a lot of the time because I'm driving all over the country, meeting landowners and having meetings with estates and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I do get out, try to nearly every day, every other day. Good lad. Keeps us young. Well, I'm, I'm, I feel dead old because I haven't been out for ages. <laughs> uh, Gary Cook asks... I barely find I Doddle, but... I said I barely find oh, Doddle, it but it's nice to be out. It's yeah. not about finding It's the it, therapy. But... It's the uh, the relaxation. Yeah, totally agree. Um, Gary Cook asks, will you be popping down to uh, his dad's rally, the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally this year? Of course, Gary, if I'm invited again, mate, I would absolutely love to, as I did last year. I only managed to pop down for uh, most of the day, uh, one of the days last year, when we weren't doing a dig. I don't think I purposely did a dig on that day, so everybody could uh, head down, and I got the chance to go down. So, yes, Gary, would love to come down to another one of your amazing Rodney Cook Memorial rallies, mate. Hey, Dave. Dave, Karen has just sent you the Sandwich Horde news report from 2012, apparently, to your Outlook. To me, Outlook? You want I haven't got an Outlook. He says he hasn't got an Outlook. Luke's got an Outlook. Luke's got an Outlook. Oh, he said it's bloody Luke, <laughs> Luke can forward it to me. Uh, the, the last question I've, exactly. I've got from uh, listeners. If you could get any site in the UK for a dig, where would it be? Where would it be? Uh, there's a few places I'd like to get um, permission. Uh, a couple of them that I'm working on. Uh, well, if, oof, where would it be? Oh, I honestly don't. There's so many amazing places. There's some that I... I wouldn't like to say because not many people know. <laughs> I, 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 let, let's let's look at it in a different sense. The likes of well-known archaeological sites, the likes of Stonehenge, uh, are below things throughout the country. What would the problem? The problem with sites like that, though, is that they've probably been absolutely ransacked and toasted by uh, our, our archaeologists' predecessors, the antiquarian. <laughs> who um, was, was probably much like a beginner detectorist, really, and they just went digging holes everywhere, not filling stuff in, not recording anything. They're just sort of like wandering off the road, like, oh, there's a burial mound. Let's see what's in there. Look, let's get 10 guys with a spade and go and dig the crap out of it. Um, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> they're, they're all those kinds of places. Have been done today, as it were. Yeah, you're probably right. But, hey... Uh, Ooh, there you go. That's a nice one. Uh, I've done a bit of uh, metal detecting on, uh, where was it? Marston Moor, uh, the Battle of Marston Moor site, uh, a number of years ago when we found a multitude of things on there. Uh, we had permission on the field directly behind the monument suite. Well, the most things we found, I think, were musket balls, but they were, they were lying on the surface, and uh, what a location that is. Absolutely stunning. Uh Mark, your vid- your audio's gone again. That's it. Uh, shouldn't have, uh, unless he wasn't speaking. I think uh, Luke, he was actually uh, one of the feeds had gone because he didn't didn't move for a bit. So it might be his uh, Wi-Fi may have move your head, Mark. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, you'd stalled you'd yeah, stalled a minute. Right. One of the feeds somewhere must have gone a bit. Uh, but yeah, all good again. Yeah, all no, is dandy. Yeah, that'll be it. All, 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 all is groovy. So, anything else you'd like to add tonight, Mark? Or- uh, is there anything else I need to say? Well, I, I've got to thank everybody that supported the Detective All events and the causes that we've raised money for over the, the previous years as well. I mean, because we've managed to achieve quite a spectacular amount now, the total for uh, the charities that we've supported, and that wouldn't have happened Obviously, without the support of the LPs, the Mine Labs, the Garrets, the Regstons, uh, XP, uh, the Crawfords, the Detechnics, all of those people within the metal detecting community that have, again, supported Detective All by providing prizes for the charity raffles. Um, yeah, 
we've raised a great amount of money with pretty much the same as Gary's done. You know, it's nice to give a little bit back and uh, do what we can. So, yeah, thanks to everybody for all of your help and support and all of those people that have been come along and all the Metal Detectives members. You're all wonderful. And as well... Oh, apart from the ones that don't fill your holes. <laughs> Uh, in, a, in a week where we've had a lot of bad press in the metal detecting community, thanks to the alleged incidents on English heritage sites, the good story is the likes of uh, what the monies that Detectable have raised, the, the monies that the Rodney Cook Memorial Rally has raised, you know, the substantial figures, it doesn't get as much good press as it should uh, because no, it's, it's substantial people, amounts. There's people like Malcolm Andrews, Dorset and West Pathfinders, all of their digs are for charity. They, they don't take any money. There's loads of other groups out there that are raising great amounts for various causes and that, and they all deserve a big pat on the back. They certainly you know, do. As you said, there's a lot, a lot of bad publicity for the hobby, but there are a lot of good people out there trying to do a lot of good, despite the, the, the bad press and the negativity that we might get a lot of the time. Certainly right. Going back to Nighthawking, have you ever had much issues with your sites and your uh, digs that you've organised that have had issues with night hawking? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's uh, one one of the sites I'm trying to get at the moment actually uh, is an estate and they have a really big issue with night hawking and they have done for quite some time and they've been very reluctant. I've basically had this off of them for the last four years. Um, every time I've attempted to speak to them, but thanks to someone that I now know on another estate that we have got permission on now, uh, they are now talking to me. Um, so I'm hoping at some point that they will let us on there, but that, that site, I know for a fact that they've, they've, they've been hit terribly, and uh, one guy was arrested there a few years back with several Iron Age coins, and uh, the Heritage Crime Unit are always watching this particular place. So, yeah, uh, one of my first commissions in Aylesbury, funnily enough, the farmer said to me, just go where you see the holes. And I was <laughs> like, holes? Oh, you're giving them somewhere else commission? He went, no, they go digging the crap out of this field at night. And I literally walked into this field, looked where the holes were and started finding Roman coins. I was like, oh. And, and I've had that permission now. I've lived in Aylesbury for six years and it still gets night off to death. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I see people out there in the daytime. It's not night time. They just go out there whenever they like. They've got no respect. I've told people to piss off. I've asked them what they think they're doing. I've heard all the funny stories. Oh, I've got permission off the land owner, mate. Oh, what's his name then? Um, uh, uh, uh. Do you know, oh, there, I think I'll go now. there's one instance myself, me, myself and a work colleague, we were metal detected on a field, and I went, right, come on, we'll go and try this one. And we went into the next field, and the guy approached us, what, what are you doing here? Uh, metal detecting. He was told us to do that. John, wrong field, mate. Obvious, a mistake on my behalf just went. In fact, uh, Tempest, the um, metal detecting group that I chaired, loosely termed, uh, we went on a dig. Uh, an old school friend of mine had met somebody in the same area as me and he had a farm, load of land or what have you, and she's given me the directions, which was further away from the house, to go to another site, another field. Yeah, I went to the wrong road and went on the wrong field, <laughs> entire group. <laughs> So all we could do was offer our apologies. Uh, but You're not the first person to have done that, mate. I've heard stories of other people doing that as well. Touch wood, though. It's never happened to me. I'm pretty good <laughs> with maps and directions and stuff like that. The thing was, though, Mark, a gentleman who lived opposite to this field, he come out and he said, everything all right? I said, total mistake on my behalf, blah, blah, blah. He went, come on here if you want. So he gave us instant access to his land. And then we got access to a, a Victorian golf course, a former Victorian golf course, which is now a farm, <laughs> with a hall on it. And it was like, if it wasn't for the mistake, we wouldn't have got access. And some of the things that were Everything gleaned there. for a reason. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, mother's cheese. Anyway, Mark, I, I've took up enough of your time tonight. Uh, I'm sure that you'll probably want your tea or your no-children relaxation period. <laughs> And How did you get? <laughs> so again, all I could do is is thank you ever so much for coming on the show. It's been nice to speak to you properly as opposed to fleetingly. And uh, from yeah, thanks, from thanks. myself and Luke, again, we can't thank you enough for allowing us to to put the magazines together for the uh, the events that you run, Detectables, and also uh, for allowing us to distribute them at the site as well. And we've met so many people at the events; it's been 
you know, we can't speak highly enough of the events. Well, thank you for all your support as well. You know, I mean, you guys have been absolutely awesome since the get-go, so brilliant. Uh, as, as, as I said, many, many others. There's, there's other, of the other magazines and that as well, which I won't mention on your show. Um, but they, they've been a great support too, um, as have all the shops and manufacturers. Pretty much everybody from the world of metal detecting has been pretty bloody awesome. And thank you all. You've, you've actually just reminded me, we do have uh, a new guest announcement that we put on to the uh, Big Metal Detecting radio and TV show uh, last week. Uh, as I said, next week we've got Graham Dempsey uh, from Preserve It Pencil and Wax Developer. The following week, the 19th of March, we have Gary Cook discussing all uh, the Rodney Cook uh, Memorial Rally information. And the week following that, one of everyone, there's a hell of a lot of people... We're excited anyway to speak to all our guests. But the following week, the 26th of March, we have Mr. Julian Evan Hart, who uh, I could really? sit and listen to all day long. Yeah, you and me both. Do like Jules. Absolute, absolute legend. So, to yourself and to Karen, thank you very much. To all our listeners, thank you very much. Uh, one of the reasons we've got to end the show is because Luke's job makes him get up at quarter past two in the morning to go to work so uh, we'll, we'll let him go to bed himself so uh, again Mark Karen thank you very much to all our listeners uh, thank you you know it, it, we didn't have any listeners it wouldn't do the show to Luke thank you ever so much again as ever for everything you do uh, especially tonight for the, uh, the the stream and our that was a collapsing something um, self. <laughs> nah, me, me, uh, me mixer fell <laughs> off the wall. Uh, Leisure Promotions, <laughs> Treasure Hunter Magazine, Regdon's National Council for Metal Detecting. Please remember that your uh, yearly membership fees are up and coming. So get onto the NCMD website to uh, to sort your new membership. Uh, YouTube. Oh, sorry. Facebook Metal Detecting Clubs North of Tyne. Find a field of Metal Detecting Britain Beyond. YouTube, South Coast Detecting, Steve Pettican, Dirt Diggers UK, that's Brad Digger Dawn, Addicted to Beep, Ango Celtic Metal Detecting, John's Metal Detecting Adventures, to Tony K. Ward, to Gary Cook, to Gary Blackwell, to Lee Hull, uh, to Tom Bow Brew, and to everybody else. Thank you ever so much. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you, Mark. Good night. Thanks, guys. Be good. Take care, mate. The Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information, offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. The magazine is run by the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community for the Archaeological and Metal Detecting Community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com. That's archmdmag.com. And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcasts, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat, and Archaeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link, or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line.